other thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, I had done a search about, I'm, I'm sure you've seen businesses that have, you know, licensed and bonded. So I, I kind of like wanted to know the difference between bonding. Now there are surety bonds and they are there are I think fidelity bonds. So surety bonds are the ones that businesses have. And what that is, it, you'll see that in a lot of businesses where you've got somebody coming into your home or coming into your business and doing work. Uh, the best example that I can think of is when you've got somebody coming into your house to walk your dog or water your plants or babysit your kids or something like that. A lot of times these people are actually contracted workers. They're not employees. A lot of times they're contracted so they get a flat rate. Well, they should be getting a flat rate if they are a contracted employee, but that's a whole other subject that we'll go into maybe later today or another day. So what happens is the business takes out insurance so then they can cover the clients in case there is a loss. An example of this might be if you've got somebody coming into your home and they are walking your dog and let's say for example they break a vase or something is damaged that is your property. What happens is the insurance will cover that damage. It also covers people if something is stolen. And that was kind of the funny thing I saw about this on surety bonds because one of the things that it was talking about is surety bonds cover high risk employees and it has high risk in quotes. And it puts example of convicts as in people who have committed a crime have been adjudicated or uh, have actually pleaded guilty or been convicted or served time or anything like that. So the things that it talks about here are ex-offenders with a record of arrest, a conviction, or imprisonment. There we go. There are our examples. Arrest, conviction, or imprisonment. Anyone who has ever been on parole or probation and or anyone who has a police record. So it's also ex-addicts who have been... Now, remember, this is the list that are, quote, high-risk, unquote, employees. So if you've got a record, been arrested, served time, have a police record. Ex-addicts, so anybody who has been addicted to drugs or alcohol. Well, alcohol is a drug. Who are we kidding? Alcohol is a drug. But, you know, I'm sure that they don't wonder about people who smoke, which is a drug also. But And have been, uh, let's see here, ex-addicts who have been rehabilitated through treatment for alcohol and drug use. Okay, this is the one that is the whole reason why I'm bringing this up. High-risk employees considered to be anyone with a poor credit record or anyone who has declared bankruptcy. Okay, seriously? This is actually saying that if you're poor and you can't pay your bills or you've discharged debt in a bankruptcy that you're a high-risk employee and these high-risk employees aren't so much like the example that I cited of someone breaking something by accident. It's actually people who are expected to steal and I have a big problem with this. I have a big problem with trying to put people in a box because of their circumstances, because of their ethnicity, because of their belief system or anything. People get in trouble all the time. And I don't think that there's a mathematical equation or a system of, okay, if you meet this element and this variable and this is fulfilled, then you're automatically going to steal from someone. No, I don't think that exists in reality. I think this is people who are just deluding themselves into thinking that if somebody doesn't have money, they're going to automatically steal from you. That's hooey, it's baloney, and it's just not really nice in general. 
Okay, here we go. Also, high-risk people, persons lacking a work history or who have come from families with low income. So if you haven't worked in the past and you ha come from a family that has a low income, you're also most, more likely to steal according to this definition of high-risk employees. Another hooey, another baloney. Okay, so anyone dishonorably discharged from the military. I can't speak of that because I do not know what are the elements of being dishonorably discharged from the military. I don't know what circumstances that how that comes across, you know, if you have to actually do some criminal behavior or have to do some sort of thing that some people just get into a bad situation. So I really can't speak of that one. And then the last one on the list is anyone who has committed a fraudulent or dishonest act in the past. Well, that's everybody. Okay. Everybody on the planet, if they're six years old or older, actually probably even two years. Okay. Let's, let's go. Let's stick with the six. They have committed a fraudulent or dishonest act in the past. It's called lying. We all do it. We've all done it. There is nobody on this planet who hasn't lied at some t point in their life for some reason or another. So I don't know what they mean by that. Maybe they mean, again, somebody who ran a racket. Maybe they're talking about racketeering. Maybe they're talking about grifters or con men. Con people, I guess, is the PC way of saying that. But, I mean, really, come on. You can't put somebody in a box. Oh, gee, let's see. If you're poor and you, and you come from a poor family and you don't have a good credit record, you're automatically a high risk and, and potentially bad employee. This is part of the reason why it's hard for people to get jobs. Because there are employers that are listening to this baloney. It's impossible to sit here and say, you know, that because this happened to you, this is going to happen. Or you're this way because this happened to you. It doesn't work that way. Different people react differently to different situations and even if a person is dishonest and may be somebody who does steal or lie or that type of thing it's going to come across differently in different situations you might lie to a stranger because you don't really care about that stranger. You might lie to a friend because you want to spare their feelings. We went over lying a few weeks back about the different types of lies. But, you know, I don't think that you can actually categorize people this simply. I think that people are way, way too complex to try for someone to say, okay, well, because this happened to you, you know, one plus two equals three. You know, sometime, well, in math, it does. But if you've got someone who is coming from a shaded past, let's say, it doesn't necessarily mean that going forward they're going to be doing the same thing or they're a bad risk. Now, that's also not to say just because somebody went through rehab or somebody is trying to get their act together, that they're not going to continue. I mean, it depends on the circumstance. So I think that we all have to look at things individually on a case-by-case -case basis before we figure out, oh, gee, you know, because you've been arrested, you're a high risk. I mean, what if that person was arrested because they beat somebody up trying to protect somebody else? I mean, come on, you've got to look at the actual reasons. It's important to use your brain and keep thinking. That's one of the things that really kind of irritates me on this whole situation. I mean, seriously, you just cannot figure someone out 
by knowing a little snapshot of this and that and say, oh, okay, well, I got your number. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't. We're too complicated. We're way too complicated.